We all know about files. They are named locations on our storage device for recording data. Python provides numerous built-in functions to work with these files. In this video, we will see how we can perform various file operations such as reading and writing into files with the help of examples. So let's get started. There are three steps we need to follow to work with files. First, open a file. Second, perform the operations such as read content from the file or write data to the file. Third, close the file. Now, let's cover each of these topics in detail. In Python, we use the built-in open function to open files. Here, I have a file named message.txt and inside it, I have two lines of text, I love programming and I love programmers. To open this file, I will create a new Python file in the same directory and call it main.py. So here I'll type f equals open message.txt. Here message.txt is the location of the file. If this file was in another directory, we would also need to specify the path to this file. And this open function is opening the file which returns a file object which is stored in the variable f. This file object will be used to perform file operations. By default, the file will be opened in the read mode, meaning we can read contents from the file but we can't modify it. Instead of this, we could also have explicitly specified the file to be opened in the read mode by passing a second argument like this. So here, I'll add a second argument and say r. Here, r means open the file in read mode. Similarly, if you want to write contents to a file, we should open the file in write mode by using w like this. So I'll remove this r and I'll write w and this means that I'm opening the file in write mode. These are called file modes, the mode in which the file is opened and there are three commonly used modes in which we can open a file. r for reading contents of the file, w for writing contents for, to the file and a for appending more content to the end of the file. Now we know how to open a file, next we will see how we can read the contents of the file. After we open a file like this, we can read its contents using the built-in read method. So in my code editor, I'll say content equals f.read and then I'll print the content. First I have opened the file in read mode. This statement returns a file object. Then using the object, we read the entire content of the file and print it. Before we see the output of this code, I will add a line to close the file. So here I'll say f.close. We should always close the file after working with them. It's a good programming practice. Now let me run this code, so let me hide the explorer, open the terminal and here I'll say python main.py and you can see that the contents of the file message.txt were printed. It's also possible to read only a certain number of characters from a file using the same read method. For this we pass an optional size argument. Let me read only the first characters from the file. So here I'll say f.read6. Let me save this file and when I run it, you can see that only the first six characters of the file were printed. Now if we read the same file again, it starts reading from the seventh character because we have already read up to the sixth character. Let me show you how that works. Let me modify this program to read the next characters. So here I'll say more underscore content equals f dot read 12 and I'll print more content. Let me save this and when I run python main.py again, you can see that programming was also printed. So let's try to see what happened here. The first read statement or the f dot read 6 is giving us the first six characters I love. And the second read which is more content equals f dot read 12 is giving us the next 12 characters and which is programming. We might encounter unexpected errors while working with external files. So it's a good practice to open the files using try finally statement. Let me show you how. So in my code editor, I'll make a few changes. Here I'll put this inside a try block. All of this will go inside the try block and I will put the f dot close inside a finally block. Here we are adding try and finally blocks 
because now even if our program encounters an error, our file will be closed. This is because the finally block always gets executed. There's even a better way to write this same code in Python using the with open syntax. Let me show you how. So here I'll remove the try block and I'll say with open as f. I'll remove this finally code. Now when I run this code, I'll say python main.py, which should have been with. I'll save this and I'll run python main.py. This again seems to be an error. I forgot the colon at the end. Again, let me try this once. So python main.py. And as you can see, I got the same output, but using the with syntax automatically closes the file without us having to write the finally ourselves. By the way, if you're finding this video useful, a sub to the channel would be tremendous. To write content to a file, we must first open it in write mode. Then we can start writing content to it using the write method. There are two things you need to remember while writing to a file. If you try to open a file that doesn't exist, a new file is automatically created. If a file already exists, its contents are removed and our new content is added to it. First, let me write to a file that doesn't exist. So here in my code editor, I'll say with open python.txt and in write mode as f, I'll say f.write python is awesome. And in the next line, I'll write f.write I love python. I'll save this and let me run it. When I run the code, a python.txt file is created with the content python is awesome, I love python. Here both the strings are in the same line. We can change that by adding slash n to specify a new line character. So here I'll go back to my main.py and I'll say python is awesome slash n. Now let me open up my terminal and run the code again. So I'll say python main.py and if I go to, if I open the now, if I open the python.txt file, you can see that python is awesome and I love python are on separate lines. Notice that while running the program for the second time, the python.txt file was already there. Since opening an existing file in write mode will overwrite the file, all the previous data was erased and new content was written to it. So you have to be very careful while using the write mode because you may accidentally erase the old data without realizing it. Before moving to the next section of the video, the programmer's team has created an app that allows you to learn Python from your phone. The app contains bit-sized lessons that are easier to understand, a built-in interpreter so that you can run Python from your phone, quizzes and many more. The app is available on both iOS and Android. The links are in the video description. The final file mode that we will discuss in this video is append. As suggested by the name, we use this only if you want to add additional data to the end of the file without erasing our previous data. At the moment, our python.txt file looks like this. Let me add an additional line to this file and in main.file, I'll open this in append mode and here I'll write f.write, I'll write python is my favorite programming language. Here I have used a to specify that I want to append to the python.txt file. Then I have used the same write method to write new lines to the existing file. Let me run this code. So let me hide this here, open up my terminal and here I'll say python main.py and after running it, if I open my python.txt, then you can see that python is my favorite programming language has been appended to the end of the file. The read lines method returns a list containing each line of the file. Let's open the same python.txt file we have been working with on read mode. But this time I will use the read lines method. I'll remove this old code. First, let me change the mode to read and then I'll remove this old code. I'll say lines equals f dot read lines. And let me print lines to see what I get. Now I'll save this. Let me run the code. So I'll say python main.py 
and you can see that I get a list of the lines that are inside the python.txt file. Now if I want, I can use a for loop to iterate through the list to get each line one by one. Similarly, there is also a write lines method to write multiple items into a file. It writes the items of a list to the file. So I'll go to my code editor, I'll remove this old code and instead of python.txt, I'll say javascript.txt. Let me open this in write mode. So inside this block, I'll say lines equals js is also awesome. And in the second item, I'll say slash n js is my second favorite programming language. Now I'll say f dot write lines lines. I hope you must have guessed the output by now, but let me show you anyways. So I'll do python main dot pi and when I press enter, then if I let me close my terminal, I'll go back to my explorer and you can see that a file called javascript.txt with the two lines js is also awesome and js is my fa second favorite programming language has been created. At this point, we have covered pretty much everything we need to know about file handling in Python. By the way, there are many other built-in methods and file modes available to file objects. If you're interested, you can find more information about it on our website programmies.com. The link will be in the video description. That's it for this video. If you want to revise this concept, you can find all these programs in our GitHub repository. I'll also put this link in the video description. And if you like this video, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Happy programming.